Hello, I'm Mark Fox, and welcome to the Slides of Fox video newsletter. You know, creativity at times doesn't require a whole lot more than just some plain common sense. A lot of times the answer is so big, so huge, it's like an elephant in the room and nobody else can see it. Now, this story I'm about to tell is going to be controversial, and I'm sure I'll get some flack over it. But let's go ahead and tell the story anyway. This month is the 20th anniversary of the Space Shuttle Challenger disaster. If you're old enough to remember this investigation, you'll recall that the launch failed because of the solid rocket booster O-rings. It was reported that the O-rings failed because it was so cold outside, but was it really the weather that caused the accident? At the time of launch, it was 36 degrees Fahrenheit outside. Here's a reported fact that, at least in my opinion, was grossly overlooked. The surface, the outside surface of the solid rocket boosters were measured at 12 degrees Fahrenheit, not 36. Now how in the world can the solid rocket boosters be 12 degrees when it's 36 degrees outside? Now most people ignored this fact, I'm assuming because of wind chill. Now wind chill is only a phenomenon that people and living things can experience. It's a sensation we get when, say, cold air blows across our skin it removes some of the heat near the skin and makes it feel colder. But for something that's not alive, like the space shuttle, it can't feel. So there's no such thing as wind chill. Now bear with me for a moment as I explain some basic thermodynamics if you're not familiar with it. And I promise it won't be painful, so hang with me. Okay, so you have this solid rocket booster at 12 degrees Fahrenheit and a wind blowing past it at 36 degrees. Now that 36 may sound cold to you and me, but it's warm, obviously, compared to 12 degrees. This 36 degree wind blowing past the solid rocket booster should have heated it to 36 degrees as well, but it didn't. The booster was at 12 degrees. Well, it can't be 12 degrees unless something was keeping it cold. It would take something really, really cold to keep it at 12 degrees with all that warm air blowing past it. Okay, forget the space shuttle thermodynamics for a minute, and let's look at a much simpler example we can all understand. Okay, here we are back in uh, Cape Canaveral, Florida on the beach. It's about uh, 80 degrees out today, and about as windy as it was back on uh, the space shuttle Challenger launch. So here's an example though. What if we took a frosty cold beer, Coors Light, out of our cooler that's chilled to perfection, say 35 degrees, and we stuck it in the dirt. What do you think's gonna happen? Well now you know what's gonna happen. The beer's gonna get warm. You've got this 80 degree air outside blowing past it and it's transferring the heat from the air to the beer. It's a process that we call convection. Not to mention the sunshine or solar radiation that's heating it as well. So you know that there's no way this beer is gonna stay cold unless something else is keeping it cold. Now the only thing I know of on the space shuttle or even near it that's cold enough to keep those boosters at 12 degrees when a hot 36 degree wind is blowing past it is the liquid hydrogen and the liquid oxygen in the external tank. Now 20 years ago the external tank on the space shuttle had a periodic history of leaking. It would crack during fueling and the liquid hydrogen and liquid oxygen would actually leak out of it. I can't think of anything else that could cause the boosters to be that cold. Now here's the presidential report on the Space Shuttle Challenger accident. There's no mention in here of the external tank leaking, even though there's a history of it. And what's even more amazing is there's no mention whatsoever about how the boosters could possibly be 12 degrees when it's a balmy 36 degrees outside. And it's not like there weren't a lot of smart people looking at this. Neil Armstrong, Richard Feynman, Sally Ride, Chuck Yeager. How do all these people miss this gigantic elephant in the room? Okay, I want you to step back and look at your business. Look at some of the biggest opportunities, issues, and problems that you have. Are you sure you don't have an elephant in the room? Is there some obvious thing that everyone's missing? As I said at the beginning of this, sometimes creative thinking just takes some common sense. Thanks again for joining me on the Slides of Fox video newsletter. I'll catch you next time. Take care.